Hi, in this video, we are going to learn how to use the component TDB output in Talent. The TDB output stands for Talent Database Output. This component can be used to write data to databases. The databases can range from relational database all the way to cloud databases which includes SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, Amazon Redshift and the list keeps growing. This component also lets you configure settings that are specific to each database. So let's see with an example of how we can use this component to write data to a SQL Server table. Let us start by creating a new job under the job design. Right click on job design. Click on create job. We will call this job tdb output underscore demo. Okay, so it says this item already exists. Check the recycle bin and empty it. So let's do that. I'll cancel this dialog box for now. Head over to the recycle bin, right click and say empty recycle bin. Now let's try one more time. T D B output underscore demo. Hit on finish. We have the palette that appears here. Now to demonstrate the TDB output, what we want to do is read from a file. It could be a text file or a CSV file and then write to the SQL Server table. So before that, let me create a dummy file. You can see here I have created a file on the desktop called mockdatas.csv and this is the content. The first row is the header, then followed by two rows of actual data. I'll save this file. Now, although it shows CSV, the extension is a .txt file. So to fix this, I'll head over to the desktop, open it in, a, in the Windows Explorer, view, and uh, we'll say file name extensions. So here we can clearly see that the mock data is actually a .txt file. So I'll remove the extension of .txt. Now it's a proper CSV file. Once that is done, we need to have a table that can receive this information. So for that, in the test database, I'll create a table. So let me right click on the tables. We'll just give it a where care of 50 right now. And we'll give the same data type of where care 50 for the employee name as well. We'll call this table with the same name as the file name, which is mock data. So we have our input data in the file and we have an empty table that has been created in SQL Server to receive the data. Now we will use Talend to read the data from the file and write to the database table. So to read the file, I'll head over to the palette under the file category. I'll look under the input subfolder here we have T file input delimited, which means this component can read from any file that is delimited by certain characters. Let's first configure this. 
by default it would point at in.csv but the file that we need to read is on the desktop. So let me browse to the desktop, select the mock data.csv, click on open. Now if this file is a CSV you have some additional op options that you can set as well. So we will check that. Here please pay attention. The field separator by default is semicolon but we have used a comma. So I'm going to replace the semicolon with comma and I'm also going to specify that the first row is a header. So we're saying the first row represents the header in the CSV file. So now we are all set with the input. Let's set up the output component. We have to write to a database. So I'll head over to the database folder, db common. I'll drag and drop the tdb output. Double click on the tdb output. The first thing we'll have to do is we'll have to select the database so that only the parameters that are specific to the database show up here. Now here I can either manually enter all these details or I have the option of selecting something from the repository. In my previous videos I have shown how to create the metadata connection so that once defined it can be used in uh, many jobs so that you don't have to repeat the creation of a connection. So click on browse and select the local SQL server. So it is connecting to the local host on the default port, DBO schema, the database chosen as AdventureWorks DW2014. The username and password has been carried over as well from the metadata. And the only thing that's pending is the table. So here we will select a table which is the mock data. Okay, so now I realize that I have created my table in a different database. It's the test database, so I'll need to change it. So when you left click, it says change to built-in property or update repository connection. I'll choose the first option because I do not want to change the values in the metadata. The change that I'm about to do now is only specific to this particular job. So it's changed to built-in property, click on OK. And here we will give test DB. Now let's browse through the table list one more time. I've selected the mock data. Now we will connect the T file output delimited T file input delimited to tdb output. Now you can see here there are no schemas that are being passed. That is because when you set up either a CSV file or a text file or any delimited file for that matter, it does not have a schema or it cannot uh, you know, uh, tell talent what the schema is, right? You will have to define the schema yourself. So for that, we'll click on edit schema. Click on plus here. We know that the first column is employee ID. And the second column is employee name. We can treat both as string. Click on OK. So now it says, would you like to propagate changes? Click on yes. So if I click on the row one main, which I like to call as the data pipeline, you can see the schema of the data that is going to be passed between the T file output and the DB output. I'll click once on the T DB output, edit schema. 
everything seems fine. Uh, let's go ahead and execute this job. The job completed, it does show the statistics where it says two rows in 1.61 seconds. To validate, I'll head over to the database. Let me refresh the table list. I can see the mock data. Right click on the table and select top 1000 rows. Now here we can see the data has been loaded from the CSV file to the SQL Server table. So with this we can say that the TDB output component is working correctly. To summarize, the TDB output is a component that will let you push data or write data to any of the supported databases. In this example we use SQL Server but you can see the long list of databases that is supported by TDB output. These parameters that you see are specific to SQL Server. When you select any of the other databases, you can expect to see options that are specific to that particular database. Thank you.